So we've seen that the actual efficiency of a plane is lower than you'd think just from the thermodynamic efficiency of the heat engine in its engines. So now let's explain the reason for this. And this reason is something called propulsion efficiency. And it's actually very important because it's been improvements in this efficiency that have driven most of the planes getting better over the last 20 or 30 years. Now the basic problem is that if you measure the efficiency of a gas turbine engine on the ground, you look at how much energy it imparts to all the air blasting backwards, and it's about 50% efficient. But not all that energy is actually used to propel the plane. Some of it's wasted by pushing the air backwards much faster than you actually need, so the air is still moving backwards after the plane has gone away. So let's think about how a jet engine actually works. So here's a diagram showing the entire thing. You get air going in slowly and coming out fast, and it's the difference between the two that provides the thrust. The air comes in, and a whole bunch of spinning blades compress it to a very high density and pressure. It then enters the combustion chamber, where you squirt fuel in and set fire to it. That raises the temperature and the pressure even faster, so air flows very rapidly out the back, and that's what drives a plane. As the air escapes, it flows past a few blades at the back, which have to be designed to tolerate very high temperatures, and they're connected to the blades at the front. So it's the fast gas going through the blades at the back that actually drives the gas turbine and compresses the air at the beginning. Very clever. Now, in an ideal situation, all that energy goes into propelling the plane. But in practice, a lot of it goes into making the gas at the end go out really fast, which is somewhat wasted. We saw earlier that to keep a plane in the air, you want to push a large amount of air down to low speed, not a small amount at a high speed. Either will give you the same thrust, but the large mass at low speed uses far less energy. And the same applies here. You can get some thrust by blowing a small amount of air backwards from your jet really fast, or a large amount very slowly. But in energy terms, pushing a large amount of air slowly is much more efficient. So let's do the maths of that. So the thrust of a jet engine is given by a force's rate of change of momentum. So you look at the momentum of the air coming in and the momentum going out, m dot vj coming in per second and uh, m dot v going, uh, vj going out and m dot v going in, and the difference between the two gives you your thrust. So the power you're applying is going to be the fr the, the, this force times the distance you go per second, so it's just going to be that times the velocity. So that's the useful power from your plane. That's the actual contribution it's making to getting the aircraft going through the sky. However, that's not the same as the total energy put out, some of which is just being spent or wasted on blowing air back really fast. So the power that's actually being produced by the engine is equal to the kinetic energy of the air going out minus the kinetic energy of the plane air going in. So half mvj squared minus half mv squared. So the propulsive efficiency is the useful power over the total power. So it's this over that, and if you do the maths, that comes out as 2v over v minus vj. And what this means is that vj is usually much bigger than v, and if you make vj bigger and bigger, the propulsive efficiency gets very low. If vj is 10 times more than v, then the efficiency is going to be only like 10%. So as we said, you're better off pushing larger masses back slowly. And for an A320, the propulsive efficiency is about 50%, and it naturally explains the gap. What can you do about this? You want to have the jet that squirts air out slower. Well, that has been the big progress in aircraft engines in the last 20 or 30 years. These are the so-called high bypass ratio engines. This is what a high bypass engine looks like. It's got the normal jet in the middle, but the, um, so the air comes in through here, is compressed, you apply the uh, uh, fuel to it and blows out. As it blows out, it makes these blades spin, which are connected via the crankshaft. But what it does is the crankshaft is bigger at the front than just the air through the middle, so it pushes more air down the side. This is what we mean by bypass. This is air that's pushed in by the fans, acting basically as propellers, and bypasses the jet engine and goes out. So what this means is you're pushing more air backwards at a lower speed, which is what gives you the higher efficiency. Some of the most efficient turbines that is actually use gears so that they, again, have this 
normal jet in the middle, but then I might have a gear that rotates an even bigger blade outside of the lower speed, so you push even more air back at an even slower speed and make it even more efficient. And you can see the difference, because these engines have to be much wider, because they're sucking in more air to push back at a lower speed. So here, for example, is a Boeing 737. Here's one of the original versions, and here's a modern one. And you can see here the jet engine is actually quite narrow, whereas here it's much wider. Actually, in the middle of this is a narrow jet engine, but it's driving high bypass ratio fans to push more air backwards at a lower speed and give you higher efficiency. This is actually what's caused trouble for the Boeing um, with a whole bunch of plane crashes because they tried to add these much bigger engines to their plane without changing anything else. The trouble is having a very big engine means that the centre of thrust is going to push the plane a different way and they had software controls to deal with this and this went wrong and caused some crashes. It is a problem for modern airliners because ideally you'd want your fan to be so large it would bump into the ground. So maybe you have to move the wing further up, um, with longer undercarriage, and that's going to make things more difficult and it can't be fit on existing planes very well. So already you've got the stage where some engines actually have flat bits at the bottom so they don't bump the ground when you're taking off. To make things even more efficient, you could use what's called a prop fan. This is a, a, a jet engine, but with the blades actually very large outside, driven by the jet engine. And these are even more efficient, though they haven't been used practically very much. People are worried about them being very noisy, and you can't put them under the wing because they're just too big, so they have to be up here near the tail. And under the wing is very convenient in terms of maintenance. If things up near the tail, it's much harder for the engineers to get in and fix it. But this could be the way of the future. These giant blades either have your entire plane further up, or mount the engines over the wing, or put the wings higher up so they come out of the top of the fuselage rather than the bottom. So there are various possibilities, and this is how you're going to make aircraft engines more efficient in the future.